and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a very different video for me. I am kind of doing a reading challenge slash like secret TBR video I guess. I don't really know what to call this type of video but basically I'm just going to be reading four really hyped YA fantasies and I'm going to vlog the entire thing. I've wanted to do this kind of video before but with romance titles because that's obviously what I read. But I thought it would be fun and maybe a little different for me to do it on YA fantasy. I mean, I rarely read YA nowadays, let alone YA fantasy. I like never pick up anymore, so I just thought it would be fun. This is not some like experiment or some like commentary. It's literally just going to be me reading for hyped fantasies and vlogging the entire thing and giving you my opinions slash like mini reviews. Even though I don't really read YA fantasy anymore, I still feel like I'm going to enjoy the books that I'm going to read. I don't want this video to be like, oh, a romance reader who reads fantasy. That's not what it is. It's just, I haven't read fantasy, YA fantasy in a while, and I want to see what the buzz is about these books. I just really hope I enjoy them. I don't know. I guess I should talk about what books I'm going to be reading. I'm not subscribed to a lot of booktubers who read fantasy or who read YA, so I don't know if these are necessarily that hyped on booktube, but I know that they are hyped on like book Twitter or stan Twitter or whatever you want to call it, because um, that is where I've seen the most talk about these books. So there are four books, and the first one I have is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo. I have heard amazing things about this. This is one that I've heard more so from Twitter. I know two of my friends really love this book and have told me to read it, so I'm basically reading it because of them. But all I know about this is that it is about mermaids. I think it's like a loosely retelling of The Little Mermaid. The next one is Furyborn by Claire Legrand. This one I've heard both from booktube and Twitter. We'll see how I feel about this. All I know is that this is like pretty heavy fantasy and it follows two timelines, I do believe. The next one is not necessarily fantasy. I think it's more historical fiction, but I've heard a lot about it and I really do want to read it and I just thought it would fit perfectly for this video, even though I don't really think it's a fantasy. And that is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I literally know very little about this. I just think it's about a girl who is trying to find Jack the Ripper. We'll see. But I'm pretty sure this is more historical fiction. But I still really wanted to put it in this video because it does kind of go with the whole like hyped YA stuff. And then the last one that I will be reading is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. Again, I don't know very much about this either. What I do know is that it is about witches and there is a marriage of convenience. I've heard wonderful things about this, so I'm very excited. So yes, these are all four books that I will be reading for this video and I'm going to read them and vlog it and kind of review them and all of that. So I guess let's get on with the vlog. I'm about to start one of the books. I don't really know which one I'm going to start with, but I'm going to start one. I'm probably going to be vlogging a majority in my bedroom just because it has the less echoey room. My living room, I even though I do have a good amount of furniture, it's still very echoey and it just doesn't really do good for videos. So I'm going to be vlogging a majority in my bedroom. It's almost two o'clock, so it's kind of late for me to get started on my reading. I usually try to start reading during the day at like 1. Um, that way I'm like done by 4 o'clock. But today I will try to read as much as I can and we'll see what happens. I said this before in I think it was my last contemporary of on vlog or whatever that video was. How I talked about reading vlogs and me just vlogging my reading takes away the experience or like the takes away not the joy of reading but takes away the not the fun I don't I don't know what word I'm looking for but sometimes I just find it difficult to vlog and read 
at the same time because I have to stop halfway through the book or whatever to update and, and sometimes I don't feel like I want to do an update, I just want to read the book. I've said before how like readathons are just not really for me, like I, I still want to try to do readathons and reading vlogs and stuff but sometimes I feel like they're not for me just because I'm not that kind of reader. I don't follow TBRs. I'll put out a TBR video and then like I'll maybe read one or two. Vlogging wise like I'm good the first two days and then after that it just falls apart and I don't feel like picking up the camera and stuff. I'm 110% like a mood reader to me like that is just the best feeling is to pick up a book that you're in the mood for and you're probably gonna end up loving it because you're in the mood for that book, you know? Even though I said I'm not good at readathons and doing reading vlogs and stuff, I still really, really want to try. I feel like this is a good idea because these are four books that I really want to read and that I really want to get to. So I think this video is going to work. I hope <laughs> if you're seeing it, that means the video did work. Also, please bear with me a little bit. This is like my first time doing this type of video, so I don't really know what I'm doing at all. I just picked these four really hyped YA books and I wanted to read them and vlog my experience reading them and that's kind of it. There's no commentary on it, it's not an experiment, it's just like a reading vlog. I don't have much experience in reading vlogs or reading challenges or whatever you want to call this type of video so uh, just bear that in mind. I think the one I'm going to start with is To Kill a Kingdom. I think this one I am going to start with because it's shorter. I think it's the shortest one out of all of them. So I feel like it won't take me that long to read this. Ideally, I would like to read these two today, but I just don't really think it's going to happen. I'll probably end up reading this whole thing and then maybe half of this. I'm hoping this video won't take me more than four days to film. I don't think it will. Um, knowing me, I am a very fast reader. So yeah, I'll start with this one. I think I'll update you guys when I'm halfway through it. I also don't really know if I should post on Instagram or if I should post on my Goodreads when I finish a book because this is technically secret but does it really matter? Maybe I'll just tease on my Instagram. Also I've been posting a lot on my Instagram, it's falling over books if you want to check it out but I have been posting a lot on there. I've actually been posting actual posts like I'm fully back on bookstagram so make sure you go follow me on there i'm also post posting a lot on my stories of what i'm currently reading and i'm having a blast on there so please go follow me i'm really loving being back on bookstagram yeah i never really know what these type of videos do you post on instagram do you post on goodreads i don't think i'm gonna post on goodreads i think i'm just gonna tease on um instagram i'm gonna do like maybe like a weird post I've just maybe like this and maybe put it black and white and be like oh like this or like this oh my god yeah I think I'm gonna do that um and then I think I'm gonna wait to rate all of the books once this video goes out anyways it just really doesn't matter I'm gonna go start with To Kill a Kingdom so it is many hours later and I am halfway through To Kill a Kingdom. It took me <laughs> a lot longer to read this than I wanted it to. My brother had car trouble, so I didn't know if he was coming over. There was lots of drama. Anyways, <laughs> it's all good now. So I managed to finally read half of To Kill a Kingdom and so far I'm really enjoying it. The writing is, I want to say kind of whimsical-ish, but has like this dark edge to it if that makes sense like if you can describe the writing that is how I would describe it is like it's beautiful but it has like this dark edge to it which is probably really weird to say so I'm 172 pages in and the story is going pretty well um, we have I guess I could kind of say what this book is about um, it's not about mermaids, it's more about sirens. I honestly didn't really know the difference between sirens and mermaids, but sirens are, I guess, 
an evil version of a mermaid. This follows Lyra, who's a siren, and she's a princess of the sea. I don't really know what the sea is called. And essentially each birthday they have to steal a heart, a human heart. Lyra has a reputation of stealing hearts from princes, so she attempts to kill a prince and steal his heart, and then a mermaid kind of interrupts everything, and the mermaid wants his heart instead, and Lyra kind of fights over it, and she kind of ends up saving the prince in a way, and the queen is not happy about it, and essentially banishes her to land, gives her legs, and says you have to steal the heart, and if you don't steal the prince's hearts by the solist Sol solis what is the time solstice why couldn't i say that uh then she'll remain a human forever so it's loosely based on the little mermaid but it's a darker version also i forgot to mention the prince in here is set on killing sirens like that is what he does pretty interesting i love the writing I love the banter between both characters right now. There's currently a lot of banter and I'm really liking that. It's kind of like a little hate to love. It's really interesting, but obviously Lyra is hi hiding it a lot. Uh, but yeah, so far I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely going to be three star for sure. I'm hoping that the next half is a lot better. I just feel like it was a little slow, but I understand it was trying to like get you into the world and everything. The first page is so interesting. Like I just, I think it really grips you. I mean, to be honest, the first chapter is really just gripping. I don't know. I feel like the author did a really good job of like explaining mermaids and sirens and their differences and everything like really well without making it like super obvious like this is what sirens are this is what mermaids are but yeah really enjoying it i have always had like a love for mermaid or siren uh novels i don't know if it's because like i'm pisces but I always gravitate towards them. I just find them so interesting. There's not many paranormal romances out there that deal with mermaids and it kind of makes me sad because I feel like they're so mysterious and I don't know why we don't have more mermaid novels. Anyways, I'm probably going to go finish this right away and then I will tell you guys my final thoughts. I have finished To Kill a Kingdom. I did really enjoy it, but I don't know. I think I had a different, not a different idea, but a different thought of how it would go. Liked the characters. I like how our female character wasn't this damsel in distress. Like she was really a kick-ass character. I don't know. Like I, I liked it, but I'm not sure. It's definitely a three star, I feel like. Do I want to give it four? Like, I just, I don't really know what I want to rate it. So I think I want to try to read something else and see if I compare to be like, did I enjoy this more than the other? As for like mermaid siren book goes, this was really good and definitely one of the better mermaid focus books that I have read. Yeah, if you want a darker, like mysterious mermaid book, I would recommend this one. Definitely a three star, but I feel like I have to think about it more. Even though I did really like this, like I just kind of feel bummed that I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. And because this is not a commentary or a discussion on if I still like YA or YA fantasy, this is not that type of video. But I think about this book and I'm like, I wish there was more romance. Which is just, I hate that I think that way, that it's like if there's not enough romance in the book, I don't enjoy it as much as something that would have more romance. Isn't that a weird thing? Like I really hate that I'm like that, but that is how I am. I need romance in my books. I need it like a lot more than anything else. And I think back to when I used to primarily read YA and not really even read YA contemporary. Like I would read a lot of fantasy and paranormal and dystopian and all that kind of stuff. And like some of them barely had romance, but like I still loved them. It's just like weird how you, I guess, figure out more and more what you love and don't love in books, no matter the genre. Anyways, this video is not about that. <laughs> I am now going to move on to Stalking Jack the Ripper. As I said in the intro, I don't 
think this is fantasy. Oh yeah, back here it says like an engaging historical thriller. Historical mystery, a witty heroine, and a little romance. I'm sure you guys want to know more of my thoughts on these two, but I'm going to be saving them for last because they are bigger books. And I honestly thought I would have a lot more time today to read, but really the day just got away from me. Um, so I will definitely have to pick up tomorrow. I think I am going to start this in a little bit, but I'm like also desperately in the mood to watch Money Heist because that is what I'm currently watching and I'm almost done. So do I read? Do I watch Money Heist? I'll probably just read. It's actually been a while since I've read historical fiction, so I'm excited. I do love historical fiction. Um, it's just not a genre I read very much of, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into this and we'll see. I'm currently halfway through Stalking Jack the Ripper and I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely not fantasy. It's not paranormal. I thought there could be like a paranormal aspect to it. There isn't any that I'm aware of. This is pretty much just a historical mystery. I'm loving the characters. I'm loving um, the whole vibe and setting. I have my suspicions on who the murderer is. I will keep reading to see if I'm correct on that. I'm really enjoying Audrey and Thomas. I like them as characters and I like their dynamic. Um, I like how um, they kind of like always flirt with each other. It's really, really cute. So I am excited to continue this. I don't know if I'll finish it tonight because it is kind of late already, but I will definitely finish it by tomorrow. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So um, I will let you know when I finish this. So it is the next day and I actually stayed up till one in the morning finishing Stalking Jack the Ripper. So I have officially finished this and I really, really enjoyed it. I am gonna give it four stars. I'm kind of a little surprised that I enjoyed it as much as I did because I thought, I don't know, there was there was a part of me that thought that I was gonna end up giving it three stars, but I'm giving it four because I really enjoyed it and I definitely want to continue. So I'm gonna hopefully pick up, what is it? Hunting Prince Dracula. I'm definitely gonna pick that up soon. Yeah, this was fantastic. So this follows Audrey Rose, who is a, I wanna say mortician, but I feel like that's wrong. Or she's like kind of an apprentice. Her uncle examines bodies, dead bodies, and cuts people open to figure out like cause of death and all that kind of stuff. And Audrey Rose is really interested in that. And so she's learning from her uncle. She also meets Thomas, who is also very fascinated with all of that. And there becomes a murderer in their city who is tearing up organs from women. So Audrey Rose and Thomas sort of her uncle are trying to figure out what the killer is after and what his plans are and um, it's really really interesting. Yeah I loved the characters and I can't wait to read more about Audrey Rose and Thomas. So very happy I finally read this. I do feel like I should have read this around Halloween. Like October would have been the perfect time to read this. I would have loved that but um Maybe I'll read like the next few in October or something. So yeah, now that I'm thinking about To Kill a Kingdom, I'm gonna give this one a 3.5 because I didn't love it as much as Stalking Jack the Ripper. And I know like you can't really compare them because they're very two separate stories, books, but that is kind of how I rate things. I rate things based on my enjoyment and I enjoyed this a lot more than I enjoyed To Kill a Kingdom. To Kill a Kingdom is beautiful and haunting. I didn't find myself that immersed while reading it. Like, I enjoyed it and I thought, you know, it was something really interesting and different. But I also found that I was not a little bored. It was just kind of hard to read and I was just like, I want to get to the point, you know? Whereas this, like, I was just engaged the entire time and I feel like it wasn't a drag for me to read or anything. So that is how I sit with these two. 
I am hoping to read Serpent and Dove. I have it over there. I'm too lazy to grab it. I'm hoping to read that today. I don't think I'll read the entire thing because it is almost two o'clock. My parents are coming over, so I don't think I will really have that much time to read. It'll probably I'll probably have to read later tonight, basically. Um, but I'm very happy that I've already finished these two. I will check back in when I am about to read Serpent and Dove. So it's many, many hours later from the last clip. I think my last clip was like around almost 2 o'clock and it is now 6.30. I haven't read a single thing. I don't really feel like reading. I would feel better if I started earlier in the day. I'm just making excuses. <laughs> I don't feel like reading tonight, so I'm not going to read anything else. And I will start Serpent and Dove tomorrow and just have a full day of reading tomorrow. It just, the day really got away from me. And my mom came over and she got me some groceries and stuff. So it, it there was just a lot of things that were happening. So I don't really feel like reading right now. I... I'm gonna turn on my TV and continue Money Heist because I'm almost done. I think I have six episodes left and if I start now, I could probably finish the show. I think I'm just gonna watch Money Heist for the rest of the night and then I'll pick up all of the reading tomorrow. I already tried looking on Book Outlet if they had the sequel to Stalking Jack the Ripper. They don't. They have the third book, but it's in hardcover, and I would prefer that they all match. So I think I'm just going to wait to buy them. I also checked on Indigo, and I think they're currently sold out or something. I don't know, but I feel like every website right now is like sold out of everything. With these type of videos, I don't really know how much I'm supposed to share of like what's going on in my life or like what else I'm doing throughout the day or if I should just stick to reading. I don't really know what I guess is interesting so I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments. For my passion flicks videos it's easy to do because that's strictly like reading, updating you, watching the adaptation, reviewing it. That's obviously different than this because this is more of a vlog of like multiple books. I don't know. Anyways. I'm gonna stop rambling, but I am gonna go finish Money Heist, probably end up crying, doing all of that, and then I will pick up Serpent and Dove tomorrow. So it is now the next day and I'm struggling on multiple levels. Not anything to do with reading, actually a little bit. I'm kind of just not in the mood to read, but I'm going to keep going. Just wearing my glasses help. I'm trying to disguise the fact that my skin <laughs> is not treating me very well right now. And also I ran out of my cleanser and it's gonna take two weeks to get here so I'm just it's not going well <laughs> yeah so I didn't read yesterday at all I decided to finish money heist which I is there a glare in these <sighs> maybe I should just take them off um so yes finished money heist loved it cried a bunch whatever now I'm going to go ahead and read Serpent and Dove and I'm hoping I can read this entire thing today. I don't know why I keep like putting this off, but I just really need to get to this. So I'm going to start this and we'll see how it goes. It is 513 pages, so it's a pretty thick boy, but I mean the font is pretty big, so... I don't think it will take me that long, hopefully. Wow, already like the beginning of this because it has a French uh, proverb. Or malheur ne vient jamais seul. I guess I will try to update you halfway through or whenever I feel like it, but I'm going to go ahead and 
finally start Serpent and Dove. I am halfway through Serpent and Dove and I'm really enjoying it. The beginning was a little slow for me, but like once it really picked up, I was really into it. And halfway through it, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and then I will continue and read the rest. But so far I'm really enjoying the characters and the plot and I'm very curious to see where it goes. I'm also wondering if this ends on somewhat of a cliffhanger or not just because like I know there's going to be another book so I'm wondering if there's going to be a cliffhanger or not. I'm very interested to see how this book goes. If I were to rate it just based on the first half it would definitely be like a 3.5 so hopefully the second half picks up a little bit more or not that it picks up but I don't know grips me more in a way but basically like when the two characters get married that's definitely when I was like more into the story because I was like oh now we got some drama happening yeah I was definitely gripped more at that point like you know when a book is boring you you sometimes like look at the page count often or you look at like how many chapters you have left or whatever. At one point like I wasn't really paying attention to any of that so I definitely was a little bit more gripped. Depending on what time I finish this, I don't think I'll start Fury Born today. I don't know, this is also another really big book. It's like 470 pages and I feel like the font is smaller in this one and it's third person and ugh. but like I'm still really excited to read this. I just don't know if I'll end up starting it today. But so far I am really enjoying this. I just finished Serpent and Dove and I'm giving it four stars. I really, really enjoyed it. Probably look like a mess, I'm sorry. <laughs> I literally just finished it so I'm like a little, I have like adrenaline a little bit. The less of YA that I read, the more I convince myself that like, oh I'm not you know, really into YA anymore. And then I read something that's really good and I'm like, maybe I still really love YA, which is so stupid to say. Um, because truly, if I think about it, if there was no romance in here at all, I wouldn't have liked the book. So I do always need at least a little bit of romance in any book that I read or else the book is really boring. Um, unless it's a thriller or like a mystery. If it's gripping enough, I don't need a romance in those type of books, but for everything else, like I need at least a little bit of romance and this definitely had it. I can see why people say that this is more like new adult-ish. Yeah, I loved Lou, I loved to read. I also didn't realize that this was like French-ish, that it was about like French witches which was really cool so loved that aspect i don't want to spoil anything so this follows lou who is kind of a thief she lives on the streets she is also secretly a witch the group that reed is part of where they essentially kill witches lou and reed cross paths and something happens that essentially they have to get married and it just follows lou who is trying to hide that she's a witch and dealing with witchy stuff. <laughs> I'm not explaining this book very well, but it was really, really entertaining and loved the romance, loved the characters. I'm definitely gonna pick up the second book. It also did not end on a cliffhanger like I thought it would. Um, so very excited to see where book two goes. So far, I have been doing pretty good with this reading vlog. I'm very happy I finally read this. So I'm three down, one more to go. I might start this a little bit later tonight. Um, we'll see. I am kind of scared because it is a thick boy and I just, even though I'm really excited to read this, there is still a part of me that is actually really scared. I'm not gonna like it at all. So we'll see. I will check back in when I have a little bit of progress with this I guess or whenever I decide to start reading it. It's now the next day and I have already started Fury Born. I woke up pretty early today and I got my day started a lot earlier so started reading earlier in the day and I'm not even halfway through but 
I'm so incredibly bored and I just don't care. Um, I'm very tempted to DNF this and just not continue. I'm at page 189, chapter 20. I just don't really care. Um, I'm gonna try to read as much as I can before I actually give up, but I feel like even if I keep reading, I'm not gonna keep caring, so I think the concept is really interesting and it kind of reminds me of Shadow and Bone a little bit for some reason. I'm not really vibing with this, to be honest. As I kind of said before in this video, I am the type of reader that no matter what I'm reading, I have to have a little bit of romance and there's barely any in here so I am struggling to read this because I don't know I just I don't really care. I also am not a huge fan of Eliana. Eliana? Eliana? I don't really care about her. Um, I am interested in Riel. I think she is interesting. I don't really know what else to say about this other than like I'm bored and if I were to rate it right now, it would be a two star. I rarely ever DNF books, so it's kind of hard for me to be like, just DNF it, just DNF it, because I would rather just push through and read it, but I don't know. <laughs> so um, we'll see. I will try to keep reading this. I officially finished Furyborn. It did get better, but I'm stuck between like a two star and a three star. I feel like I want to give it three stars just to be generous, but also like I feel like realistically it's more of a two star because I just really didn't care. This book is just not for me. It didn't work for me. It's just really not my cup of tea, um, which is sad because I really thought I was going to love this, but I also did think that it was going to be a little too fantasy heavy, which it was for me. There's a part of me that is tempted to pick up the second book just because I want to know how Riel and Audric? Why am I blanking on his name? Yeah, Audric. I'm curious of how their relationship progresses in the next book, but I just don't think um, I should waste my time and money picking up the next one because I clearly didn't really care for this. I don't really know how to explain this book, to be honest. Basically, it's about two women, two different timelines. Riel, who, is it Riel, Riel? There's like this prophecy about these queens, the queen of light and queen of blood. Riel turns out to be one of them and she was kind of in hiding for most of her life and essentially her powers get exposed so she kind of has to face up to them with the kingdom. And then we have Ileana, who is a bounty hunter. Her mother gets kidnapped, and so she wants to save her, and she teams up with sort of these rebels, I guess. I'm not explaining this book very well. I'm sure you've all heard about this book and this series. It is pretty popular, so I'm sure you already know what this is about. <laughs> and if not, just go look on Goodreads because I did a poor job explaining this book. I finished all four books, which is really exciting. Uh, my next clip will be me kind of wrapping up the vlog and my thoughts on all the books and I guess my thoughts on this video. So I'm going to close out this vlog video in this room because I'm way too lazy to bring everything else to all of my books so I'm just gonna close it out here. I am very happy that I got to read all four of these books and that I did knock them off my shelves. I feel like fantasy or like YA in general is always something I don't gravitate towards that much anymore and so I definitely do need a push and this video was a great way to do that and so I am very happy that I read all of these. I wish I would have started out the video predicting which one would end up being my favorite so that I could, you know, close out this video and see if my predictions were right. But basically my favorites are definitely a tie between these two. I enjoyed Stalking Jack the Ripper the most out of all of them. 
to be honest. I just enjoyed the storyline more and the setting and the characters. I really loved Audrey Rose and Thomas and I cannot wait to read more about them. In second place is Serpent and Dove. Still really enjoyed this. I both gave these four stars by the way and I'm very excited to read the sequel that I think comes out in the fall. Because this is about witches it is kind of more paranormal than fantasy but like it's still fantasy but not as like heavy and I really enjoyed the characters and uh, the romance and I loved how it was a lot of like French and France based stuff that was really great. To Kill a Kingdom is coming in third place. I honestly thought I was gonna give this five stars when I was first putting together all of these books and then when I started reading it I realized it was not gonna be five star which is kind of disappointing but I still really enjoyed this it's like a 3.5 three star for me the setting was very interesting the writing was very atmospheric and dark yet had this beautiful whimsicalness to it in general I love mermaid slash siren books so this was like a great standalone about that and I did enjoy the banter between the two um, main characters and you know overall it was a decent standalone paranormal fantasy it was great and then fury born i think i'm going to give two stars i just really didn't care about the story at all sometimes books in general or like fantasy books that have really complicated systems or like not, not that they're complicated but it's just like very complex and it's like I just I really don't care um and I don't know I just found it kind of boring and at the end of the day it's really just not a book for me and it's not something I enjoyed and I'm sure fantasy lovers will enjoy this um but for me it just didn't work let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if it was all over the place, but as I said earlier, this is kind of my first time doing a reading challenge, secret TBR special video, and I really don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to keep trying to do these type of videos. I think my next one will be more romance focused. I think that would be a better choice for me, but I still had a blast reading these and it was still like a really fun thing to do. I found two new really good books that I really enjoyed, so it was definitely a blast. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.